what is the purpose of the diagnostic test? Well, the purpose is to determine the student's grade level. Where is the student compared to other students his age or grade level? So we can get a, an idea. Sometimes we look at our, our young children and their spelling, we go, oh, it's just terrible. Oh my goodness, it's, it's, it's just terrible. And then we, when we give them the test and we see where our expectations are of where a student that age would be, we go, oh, okay, he's learning. He's still in the process. I don't expect him to spell everything correctly yet because he hasn't been exposed to enough of the language. So, okay, I can relax. So the, the grade level assessment, it's to give us a realistic idea of where they are. Now, sometimes you'll have a student who has got some bad, you know, some low skills. And so that is going to give us a good idea of, hmm, okay, I've got a fifth grader and the student is spelling at, say, a second grade level. Well, that will explain a lot when I, sit, when I see that the student is having a hard time reading. So sometimes you'll have a student who um, can read, but their spelling is atrocious. And did I say that word? Yes, I said that word. Um, and, and part of that is because they're probably got strong visual skills um, but when it comes to how do how do they understand how the written code we call it the phonics code we call English is made up they are lacking they really have some problems with that and we want to give a complete foundation to a student so we want them strong in both spelling and in reading it is very normal for a student to have higher reading skills than their spelling and that's because spelling is a harder skill it is more difficult to retrieve the letter sequencing and which specific letters to use when writing than it is to recognize and pull the words from, from what we're already seeing. So, okay, so the first purpose then for the diagnostic test is to determine grade level in spelling skill. So. Uh, a lot of times we have people that ask us, um, I'm coming to Spell to Write and Read uh, for reading. This is a reading program. And how do I determine reading? Well, the diagnostic test is going to help us determine spelling skill. We have uh, other materials that we use for determining reading ability. But what, when we're looking at the spelling diagnostic test in Spell to Write and Read, we're specifically looking at their ability for spelling. So the first reason for giving the test is to determine the spelling skill grade level. The second is to determine where is the student's understanding of the pho phonics code starting to fall apart. And why is that important? We call that the mastery level. Um, or we could call it their tension of learning. And the reason that we want to know about that is because that's going to help us decide where in the spelling list we want to put them. So let's say, let's take our fifth grader for example. We've got a fifth grader and the fifth grader has second grade spelling skills. Now, fifth grader's got some low skills, okay? Some skills, but you know, they're lower than where we would want that student to be. So a lot of times what happens is the teacher says, oh, I better start this student at the very beginning. So they plug the student into kindergarten, first grade level words that the student already knows how to spell. Now, he might have had a couple mistakes on his test in that range, but for the most part, he knows how to spell those words. The problem with that, there's a couple of problems. One, you're teaching kindergarten, first grade words. You can only get through so much of the list in a year. And that's if you're being consistent, okay, which is a big problem for a lot of teachers. They're just not consistent. But you're only going to accomplish much in the, so much, and then maybe at the end of the year, you've gotten to the third grade level. Now, here is a student who's now going into sixth grade, and you've only taught up to third grade words. And you're saying, well, he's still not up to grade level. Well, you weren't teaching him words that were at his grade level. So you didn't start an appropriate place for that student. So we don't want to start where it's super duper easy and we can't get a student to the level in vocabulary that they need to be. Another reason that we want to know where the tension of learning is, is because if you're teaching words that are too easy, they don't understand what you're doing. And this is a problem we run into with the, the people that come to our seminars. They already know how to spell. 
And so they miss, um, and not just the seminars, anybody using the program who doesn't even go to a seminar, they already know how to spell. Um, teachers coming to this program, they know how to spell, they know how to read. But they miss what we're doing. They miss the dynamic, amazing process of the way we teach because they already know the words. So one of, what, the way we deal with that in the seminars is we teach words to the teachers. The teachers play student. And so we're teaching the teachers and we teach them words they don't know how to spell. So we pick really high level vocabulary that nobody in the room knows, putting you in place of a student, right? You're teaching vocabulary. They don't necessarily know it. I mean, it's very common for me to introduce new words and the kids go, what's that word mean? So I do that to the teachers. I teach them a word. They don't even know the meaning of the word. And they certainly don't know how to spell it. And But I teach it using the SWR um, dictation method. And then they go, oh, okay. I get what you're doing. Because I taught it at a level that was challenging. What happens is then the student's brain has to be completely um, tuned in. All of the pathways to the brain are being used. So if we teach vocabulary that's too low, they don't get that. And I'll tell you, you get a lot of um, uh, uh, stubborn kids who don't really want to go with the method that is like, Mom, I already know how to spell these. Why are you giving me these words? You know, that fifth grader, I wouldn't start with top and hat and bed and cat. He already knows how to spell those. I need to give him words that aren't going to insult him that are gonna challenge him, that are going to um, help him increase, he'll still get all the skills. I promise you, he will. But I wanna enter the list at a point where his brain is engaged and he's gonna get vocabulary that's more appropriate for his level.